Pure Love Episode 6. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Pure Love. Thank you for coming. Yes, Mars is happy to see you all too, right? This is my godson, so he decided that he wanted to weigh in on our conversations today. Ooh, so <laughs> Passionate. <laughs> yes, passionate. he's here. Okay. <laughs> Um, today we're going to be um, having a conversation about desire, um, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about what Pure Love is. So those of you who watch our show uh, know that um, Pure Love is a joint venture between myself and my daughter, Amanda, um, and it is on the heels of the Heal Project, to my project, um, which is basically the platform of that project is that comprehensive sex education is a tool to ending child sexual abuse. And really, it's a life skill, right? It's yes. a life skill um, that we need to be talking about with uh, our young people, whether we're parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, all of that. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of the things that uh, came up for me was this uh, idea that we don't talk about uh, desire. Um, and sex education is very limited in the way we talk about it, and desire is not a piece of that. And when we think about children and we think about desire, that doesn't kind of mesh. So, we're just going to kind of delve in and talk about... Um, Kind of talk about desires that I had when I was a child, and maybe that's not what I named it then, but maybe as an adult, maybe you. I don't know what kind of desires that you had when you were a child growing up, and then what that looks like when parents or, young, or adults talk to young children about that. So, I mean, to begin, like, what is desire? Um, desire is simply like a want or a need for something to happen, a craving, right. Um, so it could be anything, right? Um, so I guess in, in its most simplistic form, I think that we can talk about desire with young people. Um, and like if they desire uh, candy, if they desire like this thing. Uh, so a desire around um, what they want, a toy they want, something they want to eat, right? Something that they want. All right, and then how do what how do they handle those desires, right? Because when when kids are young, um, they might hit or grab, and their communication about that desire needs to be developed, right? So I think we could look at it, look at it in that way. And what are your thoughts on that? I think um, a big part of it that um, a lot of adults like take out of it is that they assume that because you're young you don't have any desires or you don't know what that means and you don't know what you want for yourself like you're too young to make personal decisions or something that may be permanent especially because people feel that sexuality is a permanent state of being when it's fluid and it can change throughout your life mm -hmm. but you know they feel like oh my god if you start doing that now then this is what's going to happen or don't decide to do that now or don't even give them the option to choose but I feel, I mean, I know for a fact because there's plenty of people who know exactly what they want very, very young and it may stay the same, it may change, but don't, you know, throw away the option that your child or the child, yes. And Mars agrees. He agrees. Yeah. Hey, I want my own opinion and you have to respect it and love me anyway. So. <laughs> and, um... I mean, that, that brings up a good point about, like, um, sexual orientation. Because I was thinking about desire in terms of, like, what if you're a young person, a, a kid, and you are experiencing some desire around, um, you know, if you're a little girl, another little girl. If you're a boy, another little boy, right? So how does that translate, right, when there's no language? Right? right? <laughs> when there's no language around desire even right because it's not the norm so in right right at the beginning it's like uh, something that needs to either be secret or um, scary right um, so I'm, I'm thinking a lot about desire in terms of those sexual orientation I know that as a young person um, I experimented and dabbled a lot with other little girls yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did as well. 
And um, that was secret because something, I knew something was wrong with that. Nobody, nobody had to tell me that it was wrong. It was just something that no one ever talked about. And I never saw any examples of girls with girls, right? Um, so that desire had to be suppressed. <laughs> what about you? Um, for me personally, I realized <laughs> I realized young that I did desire women, but even though you know having such a you know a liberal parent and also a queer parent, um, for me growing up because it was a stigma of oh if your parent is gay or queer then you are too. It's genetic. It's like a cold that you can pass on. So for me, a lot of, the, of my youth was spent trying to deny <laughs> or hide it because I didn't want people to look at my mom and say, oh, you did this to her. You know, like like it was some type of abuse that made me queer and not, I had my own decisions and choices and I just realized that this is something that I like. Right. And it just so happens that my mom does too. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's interesting. That was a big uh, fear for so many people. Not me, actually. <laughs> um, people would ask me, "What if? What if when your daughter grows up, she's a lesbian? Or what if?" And I was like, "And?" I thought, "Are you trying to kiss me? You want to get me see Are you to kiss me? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> and um, I didn't see that as a problem. I think other people saw it as a problem, as if I were, he's so adorable, as if I was corrupting her into doing something horrible, which is not. And I saw it as something very natural, right? Um, that that was um, her choice to make, and that she knew that she had choices around that, right? So that desire was not suppressed at yeah, all. I actually throughout, encouraged. <laughs> yeah, because like throughout my life, I'd be like, oh, I kind of like this girl. Oh, I kind of like this guy too. So it wasn't, you know, just a, a one person show. Mm. And I'm, I'm also thinking about how desire or the the lack of expressing desire. And I'm not talking about full on sex for young people or anything like that. Just even talking about it or, or seeing some expression of it. Like the lack of desire, how that can cause like stress, right? And um, fear because... Anxiety. Right, because there's something wrong. And, you know, and, and statistically we know that... Um, queer or LGBTQ, um, gender non-conforming young people are at higher, at, uh, um, higher risk or, or uh, at a, a unique um, place in risk, right? Because um, they're already not seen or invisible or their um, identity is absolutely suppressed or not validated or not... Um, yeah. You want to go back to your grandma, mama? Um, and not... Uh, accepted or acknowledged right so then that desire could actually cause a lot of stress and wanting secrecy which in combination with harm doers right when harm doers see that there is something to leverage or secret or because you're at the margins or because you're being isolated because of that identity and that desire that maybe you have no language uh, for it's a uh, it's yet another opportunity for harm doers to um, manipulate young people so I think the conversation of desire is super, like super, super important. Um, and I, I think that there's a, a misconception that people think that if you talk to people, young people, anybody about a specific topic, then you crack open this thing um, that can't be contained. Right? Yeah, know? like they feel like if you introduce an idea or anything that they're just going to take off and go running with it just because you expose them to anything. Like just because you expose them like, oh, you know, there's this type of religion doesn't mean they're going to convert and, you know, change right. their whole life. They'll just be like, oh, that's something I know that, right. you know, it could be an option, but it's also just information. Sometimes information is just information and it's not anything bigger than that. Right. Yeah, I think it's about resources and, and, and letting go of the fear that if we give information and have resources for young people that they're going to just run amok, right? We don't like not having faith in young people and not having faith in the fact that um, they can take in certain information and analyze it. And if they had an adult person with them helping to really um, have conver just have conversations, right? Have conversations about... Uh, what do you think that means and what does that feeling bring up for you and what do you want to do with that feeling right because and then that's another conversation about then communication right consent um so, so i give... desire like i desire that toy 
So if you desire that toy, so what do you want to do to get that toy? Is another person, is another child playing with that toy? Can you wait for that toy? Can you talk to that child um, so you can hold that toy for a little while? So it's a, I think everything is a deep lesson, everything. We don't give young people enough credit in making their own decisions or analyzing, forming their own opinions. Hmm. You know, it's always, we try to just give them information and shut it down after that so it doesn't... You know, you don't want it to sway in a way you don't want it to sway, but this, you can't really control that. You just have to give them the information, the proper information, and hope right. that they use it the right way. Right, exactly. And, you know, I, I think we often say that proper information, good information. And, and, and this is not to say that adults, parents... Um, have to have all the information right because you can hit a wall where it's like i don't know this you can learn together exactly exactly it's an opportunity a learning opportunity for both to say i have no idea about this stuff and now i'm gonna learn with you and that i think that just shows some vulnerability um there and like that you're human right that you're not just this adult with power that there is vulnerability and that you're willing to to take those steps to to learn and talk about all these things, those I, scary things. Yeah, and I think that builds respect and it can build your bond to see that you're going through something together. You're learning something together. It's just yeah. like when you're in school and you build that bond with anyone there, like you guys are learning together and growing together and you form a bond. Right. You trust them. They become an important part of your life. So, you know, it's to be the same with your child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the word desire too, just the word desire um, is scary, right? Just like sex. <laughs> Sex is scary, just the word itself, and so... Right, yeah, this is okay, you wanna come with me? Yeah, right. just for a second. Yeah. All right, so, like, those are just scary, scary words. Sex, desire, um, <laughs> masturbation, like, all of these things are scary words, but we make them scary. We make them scary because they should be natural natural things that happen within our minds and our bodies as we're growing up and that we have wonderful adults that are willing to like help us along that journey to find ourselves right whether it is our queer journey our trans journey our our um asexual journey um whatever journey that is right and just have someone to be there to to help answer some questions and support right? yeah definitely support is the biggest part when you're on your journey of figuring out what your desires are what you're trying to do with yourself, with others, you know, that's always a big thing to have someone there that you know has your back no matter what. So I hope that started some good dialogue or, you know, sparked something in your brain about what does what desire is and, and understanding that young people have it. Yes. <laughs> they all have desire and it doesn't have to be rooted in sex, right? But it's it's just desire. Desire is a want or a need for something. And we are sexual beings aside from any type of sex as well. We're always sexual beings even if when we're children. So it's not anything about being perverse or anything like that but we are always sexual beings as mammals we are sexual beings so it's better to embrace it instead of trying to <laughs> yeah so think about think about the young people you interact with and think about have you had a conversation about desire and what they do with that desire and how they could journey through that desire whatever it is from you know it's a spectrum of things so um understanding and like getting ready for that conversation and not leading by fear around it but leading by curiosity and and supports and and um celebration right um i think that it become it, it creates a a good foundation a really good foundation for just sifting through our feelings and understanding what these things mean so i hope there you go, Mars. I hope that this was helpful for you all. Um, as always, we ask people to send in questions, comments, um, concerns. Um, please support us. Um, like us on YouTube uh, and get on our mailing list. And think about that. Think about the conversations that you have had in the past and how you could have them in the future and how they can shift for the better. So... Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Say thank you. Say bye, Mars. <laughs> See you bye. next time. Say ciao. Ciao. <laughs>